If you really want to finish the songs you write, there is an extremely simple trick to it. But you're gonna have to stick with me here because it sounds insane. You're gonna finish the song first. Now you think that sounds crazy because you probably wrote your intro first and then tried to write the rest of your song chronologically. Later in this video, I'm gonna tell you why that's a mistake but first, I'm gonna show you how Lord of the Rings and Dream Theater are gonna help you finish your song. In case you're new here, I am Trey Xavier, and here on the channel, I cover all aspects of songwriting and music creation. A song is a story. Just like a movie, you have characters and a plot, and you're taking the listener on a journey. The only difference is that in a song, your characters are musical motifs, like melodies and riffs and lyrics, and the plot is your song's structure. You still need to develop the musical characters that you introduce. You need to take them through meaningful growth and give a satisfying conclusion to the story. Even if you're gonna write 20 minute epic songs, it's still a journey that's happening to the same couple of core characters. The Lord of the Rings, for example, is ultimately about the fate of three characters. The other characters are important but if you never found out what happened to Frodo, Gollum, and the ring, there would have been riots at the theater, and you would have felt cheated, like you just wasted 12 hours of your life. It would have been a whole trilogy full of just the thing that's holding you back from finishing your song, which is side quests. When I first started writing songs, I generated a ton of raw material because I was so focused on writing parts but then I didn't know how to put them together. I could write parts that flowed pretty well from one part to the next, but even after writing like seven minutes worth of parts, it still didn't feel complete. And then inevitably I would get frustrated or distracted and my inspiration fizzled. And then the song would go into the pile. Does that sound familiar? What I was missing was a very important perspective. I had the first bit right. You need inspired musical ideas that you're excited about so you have something to work with. But that's only the first step. A great song is much more than just a series of parts connected with transitions. Just like a great movie isn't just scenes and cuts. I was looking in the wrong direction. So let's say you've got a song started. You've got a few parts written and fleshed out to some degree, and they work well together, but you don't know where to go from there. You've reached the end of the world that you've built, and you're staring over the edge into the abyss. You're trying to look forward, thinking that you have to come up with yet another distinct musical idea that is just as amazing as that initial spark of inspiration. But there it is. That's the mistake. You're looking forward when you should be looking backwards. You're asking, what new characters can I introduce? But what you really need to be asking is, what's going to happen to the characters that we've already met? A song is a story, and every great story is really about one idea. So if a part of your song isn't about that one idea, then it's a side quest that's only gonna keep you from getting the ring to Mount Doom. To tell a really strong story, you have to have growth. And the only way to show growth over the course of a story is to show it happening to the same characters. This is what makes long songs boring if they're badly structured, because instead of seeing the same few characters grow over the course of the story, we're being introduced to an endless string of new characters that take us on these meaningless side quests. There's no character arc. Really well-written long songs are long because the writer wanted a deeper exploration of the same story. Anything that isn't that should be part of a different song. Different story, different song. So now you have a metric for deciding if a part that you've written belongs in the song. Does it help to move the plot along, or is it just an unrelated side quest that's just there for filler? And now, instead of trying to endlessly generate new material and just tack it onto the end of your song, you're gonna ask yourself, 
how you can develop what you've already got into a story that's gonna matter to people, and especially to you. Development is a topic that I really hammer on in my songwriting course, and it can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. But development just means taking your musical idea and changing some things about it to move the musical plot forward, to create something new without introducing new material. The reason that I emphasize it so much is because it's the most effective way for your song to grow in the most meaningful way, and it's way more efficient. It's not necessarily less work, but it focuses you on the meaningful work instead of just having to be an infinite idea generator. I think of each part of a song like a scene in a movie. There's the actors in the foreground, which are the melodies, vocals, and lyrics, you know, the top line. And they're on a set, which is the accompaniment, like drums, bass, keys, guitar. And it's all lit in a very particular way to highlight certain elements and obscure others. And that's like the production, the mix, the sound design. But you don't start building sets and paying someone to light them until you have a script written that's worth putting that into. Something with a story that's so compelling that great actors are gonna wanna read the lines and a great director will wanna bring the story to life. Building your song set, adding all the instruments and layers, all of that is a lot of work. And if you're doing it without knowing where it fits in the plot, then it becomes another time-sucking side quest that's just keeping you from finishing your song. Sometimes you have to be Peter Jackson and know that the movie is better without Tom Bombadil. So, how do you avoid getting bogged down in these costly side quests in your adventure? You're gonna finish the song first. You're gonna write the ending to the song before you take one step further. Think of it like this. Without a target, you don't even know where to point your arrow. And without some final destination, there's no way to know how or when your song is gonna end or what it's gonna take to get there. Of course you haven't finished a song. You don't even know where in the writing process you are because you don't know where you're trying to get to. Tolkien knew the ring was going in that volcano before he even created the character of Frodo. He didn't write a story about little halflings because he liked making up silly names for them. He created compelling and interesting characters to move the plot forward. But that ring was gonna get to the mountain no matter who was carrying it. So once you've got the first few pieces of your song, you're gonna use the most compelling and inspiring part to create your song's climax. For me, it's usually the final chorus, generally the third chorus of the song, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it's the bridge, sometimes it's the solo, and you're gonna create the ultimate version of it. You're gonna build it out vertically with all of the layers and trimmings, or you can strip it way back to its most emotionally crushing elements. Whatever you want to experience at the height of the song, that peak moment, and then we're gonna aim all of the rest of the song at that moment. That's the target that we're aiming at. That's our Mount Doom. Once you do this, everything is gonna fall into place. You've got a destination, a finale to your story, and now you're gonna know if it's a story worth telling. Because until you can see the end, how do you even know if it's worth beginning? This way you're gonna avoid wasting your time going on side quests with nothing at the end but disappointment and taking your audience down there with you. Because now your characters have a destination and a final form. Your job then becomes getting those stupid fat harvesters uh, to Mount Doom. But this time you've got the map. So surely now we can write the intro, right? Nope, not yet, and don't call me Shirley. So we're literally drawing the map of the journey. We're building the path that our characters are following. But now, we have a point A and a point B. So connecting them with a path becomes this clear task instead of an open-ended question mark. And the cobblestones that the path is made out of will be the musical ideas that we've already created, but in different forms as they develop. I wanna give you a concrete example of a song that I think does this extremely well. Peruvian Skies is a 
criminally underrated Dream Theater masterpiece. That opening clean guitar part isn't just some random nice clean thing. It's this perfect foreshadowing version of that final heavy riff. So, Peruvian Skies, did you write the heavy riff first and make a clean version of it, or the other way around? Ah, I wrote the clean part first, and then turned it into a heavy riff. Ah. Maybe not the answer I was expecting, but the same outcome nonetheless. The riff experiences growth, and we see a very satisfying character arc. I wouldn't have guessed that, but yeah. good to hear it from the horse. Oh, I'm your horse. <laughs> <laughs> Simple dynamic changes can make for incredibly dramatic storytelling, and it can carry your listener to the most powerful dynamic moment, which is the climax. And once your climax happens, everything else is just a ride out. The actual ending of the song, whatever the very last part is that the listener hears, is actually a lot less important. By that point, the ring has been delivered to Mount Doom, and now they're just flying back home on some deus ex machinas. I'm sorry, giant eagles. A song is a story, and every story comes to an end. To put a button on your song in a very simple and practical way, you're just gonna have a final variation of your main idea. Don't add something new, no side quests, just take us back to the Shire. So now you've created a target to aim for. You've written a compelling plot to get us there. You've taken your characters through meaningful development orcs. I'm sorry, arcs. And you've carried the ring to Mount Doom. Then, and only then, should you write your intro. Because now you finally know what it is that you're introducing. I only knew what to put in the intro to this video because I knew that I was gonna say this at the end. And that is why you write your intro last. And if you wanna really understand why song intros are so important, watch this video right here next, and I'll see you real soon. Potatoes.